Hello, I'm Craig Brailsford, and welcome to another episode of Small Stocks, Big Money. For those of you new to the show, Redshift is an investor relations, media, and research firm focused on emerging growth companies. Our unique platform combines global multimedia with traditional investor relations, reaching investors around the world. Now, today's show features interviews with executives of two public companies. First up is in Livex Therapeutics. In Livex, clinical stage macrophage reprogramming immunotherapy company developing Allocetra, a universal off the shelf cell therapy designed to reprogram macrophages, which are primary immune cells, into their homeostatic state. Diseases such as osteoarthritis, sepsis, and many others reprogram macrophages out of their homeostatic state. These non-homeostatic macrophages contribute significantly to the severity of the respective diseases. By restoring macrophage homeostasis, Allocetra has the potential to provide a novel immunotherapeutic mechanism of action and resolution for conditions which are life-threatening and debilitating unmet medical needs. We'll learn more when we speak with the CEO later in the show. Up next is Green Power Motor Company, a leading all-electric OEM specializing in zero-emission medium and heavy-duty vehicles for various markets, including cargo, transit, and school buses. The company has a proven sales growth record, delivering more than 700 EV stars, low-floor transit buses, and school buses, and it maintains a significant order book supported by its manufacturing facilities in California and West Virginia. We'll learn more when we speak with the CEO later in the show. Now, before we get to our first interview, our quote of the week. It comes from the book Small Stocks, Big Money. Do your homework, understand companies you invest in forwards and backwards. This quote comes from Charles Diker from Diker Management, and it is featured in Chapter 8 of Small Stocks, Big Money, a book of exclusive interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Get a digital copy on Amazon today for just $18. Now, let's get started with our first interview today with Enlivex Therapeutics. Hello, today we have with us Oren Hershkovitz, CEO of Enlivex Therapeutics, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker ENLV. Oren, welcome back. Hi, great to be back. Enlivex focuses on macrophage reprogramming. Can you explain in simple terms what macrophage reprogramming is and why it's a game changer in the field of immunotherapy? Okay, so let's start with macrophage. Macrophage is a very, very important immune cell, okay? It has a lot of roles in housekeeping and fighting in the, against pathogens. It triggers the immune system, but it also knows how to shut it back into normal state. Now, in some diseases where macrophage aggravate the inflammation, they continue to induce inflammation instead of bringing it back down to normal state, what we call homeostasis. In those cases, it's very, very important to direct that macrophage to tell them, go back to normal state. And this is what we do in reprogramming. It's taking very inflammatory macrophages into kind of a regulatory calm state. And by that, we address the problem in the disease. Now, what makes Allocetra unique compared to other immunotherapy treatments currently on the market? Well, that, that's a great question. Well, I think uh, there are many good companies doing immunomodulation. I think Enlivex, to the best of my knowledge, is the only company that, that actually target macrophages in a way that it reprogrammed their activity, that it kind of change or rely. Um, we're actually harnessing a normal biological process and the healing power that normal macrophages have. And we've taken advantage of our technology to induce that you know, healing process. So that makes us very, very unique. And again, I think we are the only immunomodulating company that are doing that. Right? Uh, reprogramming macrophages as a novel modality, a novel concept for treating diseases. 
How big is the market opportunity for Allocetra? Well, Allocetra is being developed. It's a platform, right? So it's being developed for different indications that are all addressing or the common of all of those, what's common to all of those indications, the fact that macrophages are involved and you need to reprogram them, whether it's an acute disease like sepsis or a chronic disease like uh, osteoarthritis. Uh, all of those markets are huge markets, billions of dollars of markets, because there's a, a very common diseases with a huge unmet medical need. So we're talking about, for instance, osteoarthritis around seven to nine billion dollar market now expected to grow into something like 2030 to be around $15 billion market. So those are huge markets. Oren, you recently announced positive interim data from a phase one, two clinical trial in end stage knee osteoarthritis. Can you share key findings from the data and how do those results inform your future development? This is extremely exciting. I mean, this is the first time we generated data in osteoarthritis patients by direct injection of allocetra into this painful knee. Um, now, these are very advanced patients, okay? Those are patients that are indicated for uh, knee replacement surgery, right? Um, so we're offering allocetra in loop of their surgery, and we gave them a single injection and followed them now for three months. Um, and the data that we just announced suggests that there is a significant pain reduction. The average pain at baseline before treatment was 7.8. So we're talking about a scale of 0 to 10, right? So 7.8 is pretty, pretty painful, right? Um, we gave them a single injection of allocetra, and we followed them throughout the three months. And we saw a continuous drop in their pain, in their recorded pain, and went down all the way to 2.75. So an average pain relief of about 64%. That's, that's significant. Now, it's a small study. Uh, nevertheless, it's very, very promising. And we had three patients with an average pain of nine. So almost the most painful experience you can have, dropping down to zero, which is no pain at all. So that's extremely exciting. I think it will, it, it, you know, it's again, the safety was very good. And that's also important because again, it's the first time we inject our set right directly into the knee. Um, so all of this is, is very encouraging. Um, and it, we have the large randomized control phase one, two study that we're also running in parallel in moderate patients. And I think it, it increases our expectations to see very promising safety and efficacy data. Oren, investors are always looking for catalysts. Could you give us some near-term and even longer-term catalysts for Enlivex? We have several catalysts, right? We just recently, a couple of days ago, last week, we announced the, uh, the first patient dose in a new study, which is a steroid of the thumb, the basal thumb. We're talking about this part. So actually, we have now the uh, sepsis study that we're still following the patient. And one year follow-up will, will be uh, Q1 next year. We have the end stage study that we in, you know, just announced, talked about the interim data. Uh, we'll have additional data by the end of this year and additional readout for all patients um, in Q1 next year. We will have uh, data from the phase one, two randomized control study in moderate neostate, right? That's a large study that we're running in Israel and Denmark and other countries. Uh, top line data readout will be Q, end of Q3, 25, and then uh, the six months data at, at end of Q4, 25. And on top of that, we have the basal, basal thumb osteoarthritis, and we're expecting data Q, Q1, Q2 next year. So you can see there are various uh, catalyzation points at various uh, timelines, short term, long term. And I think it's important to say that we're well funded to cover all of those activities. So we just announced recently our uh, funding round at, uh, from a, a, a healthcare-focused institutional fund, and that will allow us to extend our cash way, a runway all the way to the end of 26. So many cap, you know, inflection point, um, a lot of money to cover all of this, so very promising future, hopefully. Oren, to wrap up, why should investors take an interest in Enlivex right now? 
So I think we are in a very good position to take an interest in live. First of all, let's talk about a few, few points. The first of all is the experience management, both from the business perspective and from the development perspective. Uh, you know, chairman of Enlivex and myself collaborated in a previous company, and we took a drug all the way to the end uh, with a very, very, very large uh, deal uh, uh, with Pfizer of the leading asset. So a lot of experience there. Uh, we know how to develop a drug. And uh, the second is, of course, the platform. It's, as, we, as we talked, it's a novel modality. It's a com completely new concept. And I think uh, it, it has the potential to revolutionize the treatment of several diseases. We have several different indications, all uh, in large market, billion dollar markets. Uh, all of them are unmet medical conditions. Uh, we have several inflection points throughout the coming year. Well, uh, throughout the coming two and a half years, well-funded. Um, so I think uh, it's a very good time to see, you know, look at the company and, and get an interest in the company. And we certainly agree, Oren. Thank you for sharing your fascinating story with us today. Thank you very much for having me and a pleasure to be here again. Now, to get more information on Enlivex Therapeutics, visit enlvinfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free, and you can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-RED-CHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com, featuring emerging growth companies just like in LiveX Therapeutics. Watch this show again and explore hundreds of small cap stock videos on Red Chip's YouTube channel. And also go to our website and sign up on our events page for the webinar series. We have webinars every week, several a week, in which we feature small public companies, mostly client companies, and you'll hear straight from the CEO and you'll be able to ask questions after that. Again, visit redchip.com and subscribe today. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order your copy of Small Stocks, Big Money, a book written by Redchip CEO, featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Order your copy on Amazon today for just $18. Now let's move on to our next interview today with Green Power Motor Company. Hello, today we have Fraser Atkinson, CEO of Green Power Motor Company, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol GP. Fraser, thanks for being with us today. Pleasure to be here. Fraser, can you start by giving our viewers a brief overview of Green Power and the key markets you serve? So Green Power designs, manufactures, and distributes a suite of all electric uh, vehicles for the medium and heavy duty commercial, passenger and school sectors. Recently, Green Power delivered its first Beast school bus produced in your West Virginia manufacturing facility, Fraser. Tell us more about this milestone and what it means for Green Power's production capabilities. So this was the first uh, larger school bus that we produced in out of our West Virginia facility. Last December, we had produced and delivered our first uh, smaller school buses, our type A school bus that we call the Nano Beast. So with this first order uh, and delivery behind us, we are now working on our next order for 37 Beast school buses, and we're looking forward to many more orders to follow. Can you discuss with us the financial incentives and regulatory mandates that are driving the adoption of all electric vehicles? And how is Green Power leveraging all this to enhance its growth? Well, in the case of the school bus sector, the uh, mandates that originally uh, are originated out of the state of New York, where they are requiring all school districts and operators of school buses to be fully electric by the mid 2030s. And uh, other states have followed, most notably California. So with those mandates, uh, it's often difficult to, to fulfill the mandates if there isn't additional funding available. And so funding is available in particular in the state of California for school bus uh, purchases, as well as the EPA at a federal level that is providing funding for the acquisition of all electric school buses. 
So it seems clear that we've got a growing market here. How big do you estimate that overall market being? So to give context for just uh, state of New York, which has 50, approximately 50,000 school buses in operation today, and the state of California with 30,000, uh, those 80,000 at uh, an average uh, sticker price for the various electric school buses of about 325,000 represents a market opportunity of $25 billion. So that's over the next seven to eight years that, uh, it, that uh, operators need to electrify their school bus fleets in just those two states. And other states are now following the lead from uh, California and New York. Now, that's a very powerful magnet there. What is going to set green power apart from its competitors? Well, once in the school bus space, we are the only manufacturer that has purpose-built all-electric uh, class four type A school bus, this, our smaller Nano Beast, and the only, along with the larger type D uh, school bus. And so that clearly sets us apart from any other OEM. And in the case of the commercial vehicle space, which more recently in the state of California uh, has seen mandates initiated this current calendar year, uh, we are the only ones that have our own all electric uh, cabin chassis that we use to build out our passenger on various commercial vehicle. So in both of those markets, we have a distinctive advantage in terms of the products that we have designed and that we manufacture and have brought to market. Fraser, what is the essential value proposition? Why should an investor take an interest in green power right now? Well, as I mentioned, these mandates are, are recent. So the timing is, is, is very opportune in terms of the mandates that is going to drive growth in the two primary sectors that we're focused on, which is in the commercial vehicle and the school bus sector. And uh, we just see nothing but uh, tremendous growth opportunities in those uh, markets for the next 10 years. Sounds really great. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Fraser. Thank you. Now, to get more information on Green Power Motor Company, just visit greenpowermotorinfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free, and you can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-REDSHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redship.com featuring emerging growth companies like Green Power Motor Company. Watch this show again and explore hundreds of small cap stock videos on Redship's YouTube channel. And also go to our website and sign up on our events page for the webinar series. We have webinars every week several a week, in which we feature small public companies, mostly client companies, and you'll hear straight from the CEO and you'll be able to ask questions after that. Again, visit redshift.com and subscribe today. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order your copy of Small Stocks, Big Money, a book written by Redshift CEO featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Order your copy on Amazon today for just $18. Now let's recap the companies featured today. First, we had Enlivex Therapeutics, ENLV, on the NASDAQ. Enlivex is a clinical stage macrophage reprogramming immunotherapy company developing Allocetra, a universal off-the-shelf cell therapy designed to reprogram macrophages, which are primary immune cells, into their homeostatic state. Diseases such as osteoarthritis, sepsis, and many others reprogram macrophages out of their homeostatic state. These non-homeostatic macrophages contribute significantly to the severity of the respective diseases. By restoring macrophage homeostasis, Allocetra has the potential to provide a novel immunotherapeutic mechanism of action and resolution for conditions which are life-threatening and debilitating. Learn more at www.enlvinfo.com. Then, you met Green Power Motor Company, stock symbol GP, on the NASDAQ. 
Green Power Motor Company is a leading all-electric OEM specializing in zero-emission, medium, and heavy-duty vehicles for various markets, including cargo, transit, and school buses. The company has a proven sales growth record, delivering more than 700 EV stars, low-floor transit buses, and school buses, and maintains a significant order book supported by its manufacturing facilities in California and West Virginia. Learn more at www.greenpowermotorinfo.com. And don't forget to check out our stocks page. It is the biggest small cap stock portal in the industry. Every company listed on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange with market caps of $2 billion and less. And it is categorized by industries. Also, watch this show again and explore hundreds of small cap stock videos on Redshift's YouTube channel. And be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter and learn about a lot of small cap companies. We also have a website where you can sign up on our events page for the webinar series. We have webinars every week, several a week, in which we feature small public companies, mostly client companies, and you'll hear straight from the CEO and you'll be able to ask questions after that. Again, if you have any questions about any of our public companies featured on today's show, call us at 1-800-RED-CHIP or email us at info at redchip.com. In closing, remember, while small caps can provide significant gains, you must be prepared for the downside. Small cap stocks are among the most volatile of asset classes. Some of the companies featured on this show are Redchip client companies, and we may own stock in these companies, so please always read our disclosures at redchip.com. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you next week with some new, exciting, emerging growth companies. The federal government has allocated over $5 billion for the transition to electric school buses. Now, Green Power, a NASDAQ company stock symbol, GP, is poised to capitalize on this initiative. Green Power is a recipient of the California Zero Emission Vehicle Program. Green Power now has orders and qualified leads for over 260 school buses valued at $100 million. Green Power on the NASDAQ, stock symbol, GP. My name is Harry Schulman. I'm an independent director of Lobo Technologies EV, trading on the NASDAQ under the symbol LOBO. We are an innovative electric vehicle manufacturer selling e-bicycles, e-tricycles, and EV four-wheel off-road vehicles and golf carts. Our company is located in Wuxi, China, where we manufacture and distribute our bikes throughout the world. We have over 250 distributors presently and growing rapidly. Our company has growth throughout Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Southeast Asia. The company is manufacturing products and also doing distribution within the PRC marketplace. The company is a scalable, highly efficient, high quality and cost effective manufacturer. The company has been in business over 10 years, uses great customer feedback and market preferences to create very appealing and highly uh, cost-effective bicycles in a quality environment. The company uh, has an existing huge marketplace in which to sell its products. 
Uh, it has a large addressable market in, in within the domestic market and also globally. It has established, as I said, it's a distribution network that continues to grow. Uh, recently, uh, in the last few months, we've been able to have extensive reach in Latin America. An example of this is in Brazil, where our Brazilian distributor had visited our factories along with some competitors, uh, which they have been buying product. And after visiting our facility and seeing our latest designs and the relationship that we've established over the last few years, they've decided to consolidate all their business to Lobo. We are now going to be their exclusive China distributor and manufacturer of products into the Brazilian marketplace, for which we're very excited about. We have a strong financial position. We're virtually debt free. We have used our money from our recent IPO in March to uh, improve our working capital, increase our manufacturing space. Our footprint now is double the size that it was in March, and we are starting to fill our capacity. We also have spent a lot of the funds that we received into product development, where we are making new products and new innovative solutions in the green EV marketplace. If you'd like to learn more about Lobo, please visit our website, loboevinfo.com. Thank you. Neuropathic corneal pain is caused by damage to ocular nerves. The pain can be excruciating, and there is no FDA-approved treatment for this disease. Now, Okio Pharma is the first biotech to have an investigational new drug application approved for NCP. Okio Pharma is now preparing for a phase two clinical trial in patients with NCP. Okio Pharma's drug would be the first ever approved for NCP. Recent insider buying from the chairman of Okio. Okio Pharma, symbol OKYO.